All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to the Paladins Minor League. We just wrapped up with EU. It's time to get going into North America. Of course, your two lovely casters to take you through the action to start it off. Rain day and rain day. And we also have Pretty Air here as well. <laughs> How you doing, man? I get it. You get it. Because I'm not lovely? No, no, you're not. Well, you're more than lovely. Now, I couldn't describe you in a word as simple as lovely. Thanks, man. Did you know? catch that Warders Gate game? How'd you feel about that? I loved watching some Warders Gate. What are your Date. thoughts on the Beam Me Up Scotties? Did I say Warders Gate? Warders Gate. I like the Beam Me Up Scotties. I'll take you on a Warders Gate. <laughs> I'll take you on a Warders Gate <laughs> and Warders Gate, baby. Uh, two stars on Yelp, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, relatively inexpensive, I will say that. No, oh, I man. like it. Um, I think it I think it provides a unique gameplay uh, opportunity for these players to showcase some different champions having some viability, especially those who can, who can maybe make use of that a little bit more. Anyone who's got a big dash, even a lead on Manifest Destiny, you know, you could probably mm -hmm. go halfway into the back line towards uh, the payload push finish uh, with one of those games. So, hope we get to see more of that. Definitely a longer set that finished up in Europe, but hopefully we have uh, some more consistently good games here, and I think we will in North America. Downfall and five stack esports, both two owing their competition, and awaiting them is stacked like pancakes. So, Formidable. I like pancakes, and... Gosh, it's a stack. shame we didn't pick maple syrup as our scent of the day here. It, it is certainly a shame, and you were sniffing it as well. We got some forest pine, and I think it was a strong choice. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of stacking going on here. Downfall and five stacks. Someone's got to be claimed a winner <laughs> the first. The ultimate stack. Yeah, we're stacking all types of things <laughs> here today in Studio 5. One of these teams will move on to the finals, which is is the, the proverbial finish line where you need to get to to move on to the next week. But obviously, you have to fight for seeding, which is going to be ultimately very important. While eight teams are going to make that final bracket, we're only taking four yep. into the actual league itself. So very, very critical that you give yourself the easiest path to top four when it comes down to it. And we're already seeing great teams here display themselves. So looking tough, looking tough to make that top four. But I'm sure these teams believe they can do it. As we head into game number one, let's see where the map will be played. It will be Serpent Beach. So right where we finished in Europe, we will start in NA, a Makoa Anchor as a really cool Neat. logo there. And then what has to be a wolf, right? I think so. But uh, in the shape of a... A five-pointed wolf. A five point. One for each of the stack and five stack esports. You know, it's Gaming a... Club. Yeah. I wish I could say there was some, some significance to that, but... If there is, it is beyond me. So we got to see a little bit of Kinesa there, and we had a, a kind of a conversation of, does she have a, because, you know, Stone Keep, uh, Serpent Beach, those are kind of her fringe maps where she did work before, but I'm, I'm questioning does now, now, does she work now? <clears throat> where does she work, period, nowadays, right. that she lost what was once so valuable about her, which is that one-shot potential. Right. Didn't have it. Very different kinds of bands coming out here from North America. Akoga completely glossed over in Europe. Never picked nor banned. Will be banned out here for five steps. Yeah, what's so interesting is that first set um, we saw uh, Bugsy's team as well playing against Chroma Space uh, ban out the Koga Torvald the first two games, and it didn't mm. work out for them at all. So they stopped moving into that. I wonder if that just maintained well, that, hey, this is not important. These aren't in the priorities. I haven't seen anyone play it today. And uh, clearly, there is something in, uh, shifting here in North America. Grover Makoa, mind. seeing those bands quite Stay often. Grover been doing well. Lead. And Ash and Khan, clearly extremely valuable tanks. A high level of tank Pray priority here in the first three gods. picks. This is something that I, I do like that we have. Like, NA does this. EU does that. Xbox does this. PS4 does that. Yeah. But I am game, also excited for the Premier League die. to sort of like just there bring it all together ground. and say, what's what's the top dog here? What will all float land, to know? the top? Yeah. Nobody is really going to have the benefit of, of being split by a region That's so where true. two different metas are going to come to fruition there. So I'm wondering what we're going to see at the Premier League. I absolutely cannot wait for that to get started here. But the minor league drafts have... have not surprised me. There are there is a, a lack of like a couple of things yeah. that I thought would be super strong. I thought Koga was going to be like uh, picked up all the time. It just felt too easy to succeed with. Yeah, uh, but we'll have to see. I mean, things are still in flux for sure. Champions yeah, definitely. I think people are wary. Um, but again, it, it's one of those things that's banned so often you never get to see it work. So then it maybe falls out of people's awarenesses. Uh, and it will be up to a team to bring it back. I have seen a lot of pip though succeed today. That is for sure. Yeah. And uh, the victor has been here and there. Um, I think he was actually picked up. I'm not sure if he was actually ever played in that game unless they died very quickly. I don't remember watching a victor play today. Did well, I, know. I did I see him it. in the draft. Uh, so I think that was where we had some of those errors in the draft. So here's the lineup. Khan, Ash, Cassie, Saris, and Pip. And
Sayonara, Maldamba, Leon, Barrick, and Victor ready to get into the game. Victor's a lot of time comes down to just like, is the player in there that wants to play Victor, you know yeah. what I mean? He can certainly work, but despite how simple of a character is, there is kind of a lot of nuance that you have to sort of perform well on to make him operate at this uh, minor league level and above. Guys like Bitey, you know, guys that just love it and just play a ton of it. They just know where it needs to stand on these maps, knowing how it's, how it's got to take this 1v1 or that 1v1, or how it's putting pressure, all this types of stuff, stuff that I don't really have an expertise on. Yeah, that's why I'm sitting up here and they're sitting here in front of the computer ready to rock and roll with some Vic. I expect burst mode because he's got pretty insane mid-range if Absolutely. you can pull it off. Right now he's sitting on shrapnel though. I would love to see burst mode. I, I've been really hit hard by some uh, burst mode victors. And Creeps up on I've you. I've seen the value. And you know, he's got this lifesteal card, which I'd love to take a look at this loadout. Because you don't have to go burst mode to run it. Uh, but I've been seeing a lot of Predator after that had been changed. Uh, a lot of people running level five. 40% lifesteal is an insane amount to have at base. And so that seems to be the one stat that, people, that uh, the designers are willing to kind of leave in to give people in their cards. Yeah, Obviously. lifesteal yeah. and damage reduction. And, and damage reduction, those seem to be the two. 36% early for five stack esports. And this this happens a lot. This happened a lot to Navi, where they, they maintain control of the objective. This would be, you know, lazy down on the point, but they're losing this fight everywhere else on the uh, on the map. And then you have to ask yourself the question, how hard of a loss was that? We got 60% of the capture point. We did lose a couple of players, but at the end of the day, it's those kills that yeah. really start to hurt you. And, uh, you and can that see, kill. <laughs> this is interesting, too. We have a little bit of a story here with uh, the Cassie Edgem was at our last LAN and uh, was a very kind of big highlight player. Had some great wins, popped off on some uh, Splitstone Quarry games against some high-level opponents, very similar to, you know, almost doing what that Purity team did, of course, doesn't have the follow-up story of winning a world championship the next year. In fact, actually took a hiatus from Paladin, tried out some other games, and uh, has found himself back in the minor league. So we'll see how this continues, if it continues. But so far, so good for both teams, 87% and counting now for Five Stack Esports. So you've been watching Shadow up here on this ledge, and you're saying, this looks pretty good. And that's because it is. That's, that's <laughs> next to a GG angle for Pip. I mean, if he's just allowed to sit there uncontested, and uh, uh, you look at this five stack composition, and you're saying who's gonna go? Who's gonna go up there? And get him. Everyone else yep. has to take the you know the wheelchair accessible route to make it up there. And this poor little Damba. This is pretty unheard of. Don't forget about me. He gets <laughs> back there, gets obliterated the second he's in line of sight again. Tough stuff there. Shadow has a great angle there. Another ex PPL player turned minor league. And these are the guys that you look to to you know educate these young guns and yep. maybe mentor them a little bit. T Mac has shown up and, and, and been extremely competitive. You feel like Shadow definitely got caught out there. Wake up Amadeus, very aware of the cooldowns. Used the waitlist to get up, could dodge the enlightenment when things got rough. So 50% back on the cooldown for Leon as the push continues here. And Eminence on full display in the power that that's bringing to the roster. Scary thing here is now that he doesn't have his enlightenment, though it's close to being charged, and that's one of the benefits of, of playing this character effectively. You're going to have that enlightenment nearly every fight. 130 on the clock here. Ooh. If they get pushed by Shadow, didn't even have to get in their faces to pick up the double kill. Effectiveness with Pip has definitely been an incredible thing to behold today. Yeah, and he's uh, got that card Moxie, which just makes that 1,200 heal hit for 1,600 because getting a 50% increase on it. So another 600 gets him back up to full. And uh, this also helps to mitigate the cauterize effect. So he's gonna get most of his heal off and then some uh, as he gets a beautiful decision to go in on Peligroso. Uh. Wake up Amadeus finishes him off. Not a bad look though. I mean, he, he pulls an R off the objective the onto the high ground and then kills her. I mean, it's up to the rest of his team. At this point, the stun actually connects. Nice. And now it's tanks Good. fighting DPS up here on the high ground, pushing this Leon not to her death, but one more shot will do it. And now it's a big 800 dash. Nice. Jay thought it was a kill right then and there, but he puts one more in, and this is just good control on the high ground. Yeah, and I like the decision. You sometimes hit that knock up, not for the damage, just for the displacement. They're trying to reload, get themselves back together, get their bearings, and that just throws them off. Maybe adds another second and a half where you can set up your free shot before they land. Ice Monkey getting very low, but so is Team Mac, pops out of the Shadow Realm to go give a little bit of healing and stay in the back line while his teammates continue to push. There it is. Not much damage coming out from the grenade there. 10 seconds on the clock. <gasps> but a lapse in Ooh. judgment. A lapse here in the defense allows downfall to slide it through. That's a big momentum boost 
for the boys of Downfall, who are now sitting up 2-0. Nice stuff from them to get it through early. Khan moved the wrong way around that barrage. He takes it to the back, goes down, and one more kill allows for a nice, easy double kill there. But at the end of the day, five stack are in a rough spot here, and they got to find an answer for this pip. Last game, Bugsy took the exact same route with Kinesa, but he straight up had a Leon waiting them for him. It was it, it looked like it was very clearly something he had done before in scrims because they were so prepared for it. Now ah. that Shadow has had the full effectiveness of that angle in this first round, I expect someone to make the adjustment and to go up there um, in the second round. And this is definitely a. Uh a team that's ready. I, I'm assuming five stack because of Ice Monkey and Peligroso, uh, and I know Ice Monkey as well. I believe from Brazil uh, is more of a Latam Brazil-based team, uh, with maybe a few members operating around that area. And uh, of course, Downfall more traditionally North American. Yep. Shadow playing Splice, uh, playing on Splice in one of the earlier seasons, and continuing to dominate on this pip. So a lot of uh, players with a lot of experience here in this PML. And that's something that's going to happen here in the minor league now. If It's NA and it's EU. No matter where you're from, you have to pick one of those regions, and that's where you have to play. And this obviously has a bigger uh, impact for those Latam guys who traditionally had their own region, and less right. so for, like, the dude in Germany or yes. the dude in France yes. who just all played in Europe anyway. Yep. But now we're at 84% for downfall, Ooh. looking good. And I like that nowadays with the more, for at least the Over most time. part, smoothness of power curves and items and things like that. Yeah. This is a very, it feels like, early game type of loadout for Shadow's Pip. He's gone all the way into Moxie, and he's gone all the way into his Acumen Lifesteal. Two things that are going to fall off as Cauterize starts to come online, but we might not even make it there as they're already up 2-0, looking to go up 3-0. Team Mac on an 18 streak. They have not found a good way to deal with the Saris, and luckily that Shadow Travel saves her life. Pelagrosso is one shot away, and Team Mac's going to get in on the action. Jay cleans it up, and this is the benefit of having two healers, one as a main support, and then the other able to roam. That's what Shadow's doing, finding kills. It's a deadly combination. Pip is one of the worst champions to let off a leash and essentially let him do whatever he wants, roam free, so to speak, and he has certainly been doing that this game. I want to see, hey, how does he get up there? Because I was playing Pip the other day on Serpent, with you, actually. Oh, nice. And I could, okay, that's what I wasn't so doing. the rock. The rock, it was like on the railing, wall jump off the rock. That's you could go to, the other way to do it is go to the uh, little hut, and then jump up to the hut, then jump from the hut to the uh, top. The hut to your right, right where he's facing, right there. These are the things you got to know when you're a pit player. Things you got to know. And that's something I always commend good pl pit players on. It's like they know exactly where they can get on this map and the fastest path to do so. Weightless is one of the more unique movement cooldowns in the game. Yeah. But it's certainly one that if you know the map and you understand wall jumping in Paladins, which is not a hidden mechanic, but it's not one that's thrown up in your face. Exactly. Kind of like a comeback mechanic sort of thing. If you know how to, how to work that, you can really be twice as effective on the character as if you didn't know how it worked. 100%. You can, you can find so much value in uh, what I see is uh, an opportunity to just move to a position that puts you in a more likely spot to kill your enemy than they are to kill you. And that's that's really what it, it comes down to. Shadow is always having the high ground. He's always getting the first shot. He's always putting them in a slow first. And then he's getting bonus damage on top of it. It's just a very bad duel to win. And you almost have to come back from behind. Oof. I'm not sure if that enlightenment even made it past that seed shield there. 47 seconds on the clock, and Nara yaks down the seismic crash. Gets kills something. are definitely coming through here for the defense. But at the end of the day, are they the right kills, and are they from the right angles? Because yeah. when you have to drop down into the meat grinder like this, oh boy, just allowing Jay to do it, honestly all game long a pretty damn good job of controlling high ground, <laughs> just controlling everyone with knockbacks. This is rough. I mean, Jay is dominating on yeah. this Ash. And the Ash has proven yet again to be a fantastic pickup. But hey, really not one pick to look at there. It was the entirety yeah. of downfall kind of steamrolling through this first map. Uh, a lot of synergy in that entire team composition, the duo healer. Uh, no one was really pressured out. Yeah, great stuff there all around. And that's what makes it tough to, you know, answer. It's not a really queer question. How do we stop these guys? How do we slow them down? There's yeah. a lot of problems to be solved there uh, for the guys of downfall. And I, I don't, or excuse me, five point. I don't know if they're going to be able to recover that quickly. This is the best of five set. We've seen some pretty close ones today, but this looks like it might be shaping up to be a blowout. We got some post game stats for you now. 
Edgem leading the damage for his team on the Cassie. Tuga actually taking top damage in the game with the Victor. Those grenades, those barrages will help with that, but takes way too much damage in the process. Goes down quite a bit as well as the front line. He got well. a ton of damage, but we saw exactly one engagement pretty much from his point of view where he threw out a bunch of grenades, threw out his whole barrage. It's like, yeah, you're kind of like doing some damage, but it's all pretty much healed up now by T-Mac. And no one's following that up. No one's even trying to set you up to get better damage off your grenades, more close to the center of impact of your barrage, just stuff like that. So it's not enough to do damage, and that's why you know, damage is a nice stat to look at, but at the end of the day, it's got to be the right damage from the right places on the right people at the right time. A lot of check marks. Kind of just broke it down. <laughs> that's how you play Paladins, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the next uh, map here as we get ready to continue on in this set as Bright Marsh becomes the location for game two. It is a best of five, so they'll make the map a little smaller, a little greener, a little vulpinier as it is the home of Pit. I want to see how these drafts change up here. Pretty different flavor of map, but with like the Pip coming through, the Victor, this is all like sort of fringy stuff that if that has to start being banned out, specifically looking at this Pip here, mm. that might open up something like the Torval Koga to come through. And we still have a lot of tricks up the sleeves, I think, of these players here. Well, that's Early a big, con. That was a big question for me. This Pip is going to provide a lot of value, but is it going to be band worthy? I mean, I, I feel like it's dangerous territory because not many teams are familiar with what happens when you ban Pip and you let something like a like a Makoa, a Torval, a Khan go lot. through, and then Stay now you're in a position to try to counter head. that with still some great picks left open. So the choice is uh, slimming down. Ash taken for downfall up. first. I will so fight far. to protect the sanctity We haven't of the seen wild. a lot of Koga success without Torvald and with uh, I hope it doesn't come down to that again. It feels like a lot of flankers worry, get subjects. thrown in that basket of like if Torvald then yes, if, if not then no. Then sure. But Ash Bomb King will Some come through here. Gonna... Followed up by the Damba. I really really liked what I saw from the Ash um, in general but specifically from Jay. He was moving around the ramp really really effectively especially for a character that doesn't have vertical favorite, mobility outside run. of her ultimate. He found a way to stay on the high ground, to be effective, and to drop down only when it was to win the round. Right. And you notice the way Downfall have been prioritizing their composition. A ton of CC. And then two champions that they can get out of CC themselves or get the team out of CC. Immortal for Fernando and, of course, Cassie oh, Scout. So uh, the Ceres... Uh, you know, and the Inara, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to find those perfect convergences and seismic crash combos, but the Drogos will help to eliminate one of those tanky targets, but Ash and Fernando both have ways to get out of the Dragon Punch. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's tough. rough stuff there for sure. Cassian Bomb King, they can run away. I mean, it's, it's certainly your work cut out for you here, but we've seen Drogos be very, very effective. Worm Jets, I haven't seen anything but since it came oh, out. Oh, I love it, man. And it's so fun. It's it's like a new champion. I mean, pretty much. You're playing from just places you've never been allowed to play the game from before. Bugsy's bumping his head on the skybox <laughs> the whole time on Stone Keep. I mean, it's just it's a amazing. completely different flavor. It's so fun, though. I mean, it really gives you this opportunity to experience Drogos the way you want to. Flying in the sky, staying in the sky. That's what you're looking for. Rocket launchers from the ground. Like, come and get me. That's, that's what Drogos players want. That's what they got. They Wait, finally dude. let Barrick upgrade the jetpack. <laughs> exactly. It, it feels completely re-engineered. One of the more fun talents in the game, for sure. And that's the way talents ideally should feel. You know what I mean? I'm, right. I, I'm picking a completely different character when I'm picking this talent versus some of the other things in Drogos' arsenal, which are fun in their own rights, but who doesn't love to fly well, in this guy? It's one of the only talents that really augments your movement. Um, there's not a lot of talents that do that in this game. A lot of them augment a, an ability or skills, but with Drogos inherently get, just getting his movement augmented, it's really fun. It's almost as if you could pick a teleport from Eevee that could go like twice the distance, you know what I mean? And it would be a very different experience. Uh, and you'd be able to do a lot of things that you're not usually capable of. And a lot of what we saw in week one, specifically with Simsulu playing this character on this map, was like people just weren't looking at him. Like, yeah. and, and that was a little bit true out of the, out of the gate there. You could see, the, the second Cassie heard that fire spit, she didn't really even bother to look up and find where he was. She just kind of rolled away. A lot of angles to play with here in Drogos, especially when there's no real hyper hit scan threats to take you out of the air. And when you're looking at, we used to look at, you know, Cassie is kind of in there. Yeah. But when he's even further away 
these like soft counters become much, much less effective. Well, there's a couple of things that I just didn't like about this play from Tuga. One, he sees Edgem running back on the Cassie, and instead goes for Shadow. I feel like you have Cassie coming into your firing line, and you can get that spit, uh, that fire spit onto her. But he instead whiffs the entire salvo. He's done a good job of applying damage. He, he clearly is a threat for them, and they're having a hard time dealing with him. But some of those min-max moments could have started to win this fight for his team, and now the Dragon Punch could definitely seal the deal. I don't think anyone else has an ult. No, certainly not. Early Dragon Punch there. Early Dread Serpent coming up as well. Enlightenment and Convergence now up and available. Yoinks Cassie back in. Five Stack are just ruthless with their ultimates. The second they're getting charged, they are looking to pop these off, and Man. because of that, they're going to win this first point. Yeah. 11.05, hit the Fire Spit, got the combo. A couple of good shots, not quite on point, Tuga, but staying in the air, and that seems to be enough. Buying his team time, and Five Stack looking good. Two minutes now for them to try to push and make it a 2-0. I like what I'm seeing there, and that's such an important attribute for a team to have in these dragged out first round fights. When your ultimates start to come up, you gotta, even if it's not picture perfect, pop it. Get the value there, get something going for yourselves because their ultimates are gonna be right around the corner as well. But if you've already seized control of the day, you're gonna be off to the races first here. And they certainly are with 140 now on the clock. Amadeus finds the first kill here. And they're putting down Phil in the corner a little well, bit. You know, I, I now realize, and I don't know how it took me this long. Uh, they have no hit scan on the side of downfall. And playing Drogos with with in general with no hit scan is very tough, but playing him with worm jets and no hit scan, you're requiring Bomb King to hit those mid-air stickies, or you're requiring Cassie to hit that, and she's got fast projectiles, but it's, sometimes it's just there's no angle, there's not enough time to hit that burst. Incredible find there from the ultimate, enlightened indeed, and then it's the presence, looking for the triple kill. That is a 2-0 in less than four minutes, and uh, it seems like downfall might be approaching their downfall. That'll do, Fig. That'll do. And despite all that, it is Leon that has a you know a big chunk of that damage. And with this Drogos running around so freely, I think you'd like to try and maybe see this fight refocused indoors if you can help it. He's a terror from the skies, but not so much so when he's just forced to fly around in this tiny little enca uh, encapsulment. 8-1 yeah. here at the end of the round for Mrs. Leon. It's just, uh, it's gonna be tough. And honestly, uh, unless Edgem gets dialed in, and I mean dialed in, or they have a purposeful ult, like they catch him basically with a stun, or they catch, uh, Team Mac catches him with a Dread Serpent from the sky, brings him down. Uh, I don't see this going any other way. I, I don't see how, unless Toga makes a horrible mistake, anyone's going to realistic be, realistically be able to trade with him well. Maybe the Ash, that's another opportunity, but as you can see, just not really scared of getting hit by one Cassie Bolt right there. And Downfall have the much more aggressive front line, the ability to pair a Cassie and Bomb King up with Ash and Fernando. You can have a lot of pressure anywhere on the map pretty quickly, and that's what Downfall need to try and use. But so far, Five Stack do a this. good job at just absorbing the pressure. Neither of these champions are having an easy time hitting each other. Exactly. And uh, still Drogo's in the sky. Edgem shot him, what, twice and shot maybe his whole clip? I'm being honest with myself. If I'm that guy, I'm just, I'm giving up. I'm just, I'm shooting somebody yeah, else. Yeah, shoot somebody else at this point. I'm telling it's not easy. I've really only wanted to play Drogo since 2.02 came out. Had a lot of time with it. They don't have hit scan. They are in trouble. And that's what Downfall are knowing about this composition. The final pick worked really well for the favor of uh, five stack. And Downfall are probably going to have to scratch this one up to maybe another opportunity next game to not get caught out. Ball goes up. Fernando's kind of trapped in here. Five stack running away with this game a little bit. Getting a little bit better value for their ultimates as well. I haven't really seen much come out in the way of ultimates from downfall. Their stuff is a little bit more defensive, counter engagey in a lot of ways here with the uh, assert dominance, the immortal, and the dread serpent. All of that can be used to initiate, but they just haven't done that yet. They've really yeah. been on the back foot for the majority of this game. Only one King Bomb that I've seen come out, and it was it was really bad and didn't get any value for it. So Downfall yeah. have got to look to play around one of these ultimates to get themselves back in the game right now because they're just getting steamrolled. Oh, at the man, moment. Ice Monkey just walking at him, too. And you got to give credit to uh, Holy Strike, who's had a great turnaround game there. Struggled a little bit on the Maldamba, but T-Mac takes the Damba, gives him the Saris, and he's absolutely vital here. And 
is the problem. Great shots, but look at all those that are whiffing. Just cannot finish Toga, and it's just so hard <laughs> that to. That sucks, dude. It's just so oh, hard, no. man. I, I, I it's really like a losing fight, but did a great job up until that last one. Almost does not count here in Paladins. 1.30 on the clock now, and Tuga back to being a terror in the skies. Nobody really to shut him down, and this is a this is a season two adjustment. Just like we talked about, Kinesa, where is her value? How do people adjust to playing her, working her in? How do people adjust to playing around this? Now, this yeah. Drogos is just a different beast. Yeah, when you get Leon, I mean, the, the, the Leon pick, too, is a 4-0. And, you know, it doesn't often come so easily into, like, you just didn't draft correctly, but maybe just lost a sight of a couple of things here. A couple of big ultimates. Can they finish? Oh, it almost finishes off Team Mac. That's one. What can this King Bomb do? Because that could be the difference here. Still two in this guy and Edgem finds him, so maybe this will be a hold. We know that Ice Monkey now is by himself. Wake Up Amadeus has to hit this, and he's not. So it looks like there will be a little bit more time. Finally getting the Dragon and setting things up for them to defend here. 30 left in the round, and now Downfall have honestly put themselves in a pretty decent spot. Because Five Stack have spent basically everything here. They're not even halfway charged on any of their ultimates, which means they're not going to have Jack now going into the next round. This is a good spot to be in if they can just hang on here. And if they don't have to spend anything oh. else themselves, the wall goes up, puts Fernando in an awkward spot here. This Cassie goes down, things start to look grim. Yeah, I mean, now Cassie dies. <laughs> Seriously. This is a fun game for Tuga. Like, you know, I'm really enjoying this experience. I can miss every shot here and I'll still uh, kill Team Mac. <laughs> it's amazing. This is the kind of professional Paladins I want to be playing. That's a big, big Ash ultimate here, though, buying tons of time. Nobody around to displace her, and that's the exact amount of time you need if you're the defense here. Just trying to hold uh -oh. on for a little bit longer. Jay dashes away from the payload. Smart, but they've got distance to give. Convergence finds just Ooh. the Bomb King, but there's a Seed Shield that just conveniently rolls right Ooh. on in and keeps him safe. Jay is staying alive. This is some great play from him, and overtime taking away. CC immunity from the Mother's Grace is going to shut it down. Shadow finds the damage. Ice Monkey goes into his ult. Why not commit? Convergence has been used. Huga finds Shadow, and now he's trying to get him away. But Mother's Grace is back up off cooldown, which means she's not moving. And the dragon is back. Jay fearing the terror in the skies. Worm Jets controls this game. And it looks like five stack esports are going to push this in for oh, the dub. Oh, man. That was just brutal there at the end. Sheer force of will. Five stack threw it. Through and through, they get that one recharged on the seismic crash as well. I mean, they got it done for sure. And after looking so rough in game number one, that is a great game to bounce back with in game number two. Great. Keeps the set alive. And I like their mentality. You know, they have them really close to death, and they just say, let's finish this now. Let's finish this game. Let's not wait and go 3-1 because we know we're in the lead. Let's just put them to bed. And that is uh, one of the best things you can see a team who especially lost the game before yeah. come back with confidence and make a play that's decisive like that. Let's take a look at the post-game stats here and see how effective these guys were at finishing off uh, that game and tying up the set. Certainly a very humbling game, too, to, to have to go through. I think they'll be examining uh, what they did in the draft here. And while Tuga was just free reign up in the skies, Wake yeah. Up Amadeus was just as big of a problem. True. And that's what's scary because Leon would have been the more natural solution to, I think, what was happening with this Drogos. But this guy wasn't picking this up just so they couldn't have it. It's very clear he's picking this up because he knows what he's doing with it. Wow. Top frags in that game, absolutely a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, that was uh, <clears throat> just a... Cop between a rock and a hard place, right? Edgem and Shadow are spending half their lives trying to hit one uh, projectile shot onto the Drogos. And meanwhile, Wake Up Amadeus having a field day, cleaving them with auto attacks, and then hitting enlightenments that uh, even get me hype up. You'll have to see it. That's the five here, one game apiece. We're going to have one more game for you before we go on a quick break. Let's head to the map screen and see where this one will take us. Remember, our bands unfortunately did include Warder's Gate, so no more of that here in this set. A Not Frozen Guard, a Jagfall, a Timber Mill, but it will be a stone keep as we round it out. Well, last game, last set was the finals of Europe, so maybe they will unban Warder's Gate in the finals of North America. We got that to potentially look forward to. Stone keep here, map three. Downfall now have to make some adjustments. The bands have looked pretty similar across the board, but now that both teams have taken an L, are they willing to experiment more, or are they going to be more conservative? I think Leon. I think we're going to see a little bit more of the same, specifically around this Leon and this Drogos, um, because Drogos can still work pretty well, pretty much the same as he can on Brightmarsh. 
Uh, he can do sort of that same thing on Stone Keep, flying around uh, the cathedral, bumping yeah. his head on the skybox. We saw Bugsy doing it earlier today, so there's no reason after the amount of success Tuga had last game that yeah. he wouldn't just try to run it back here. The biggest thing, though, is what do Downfall picking up to counter this out because they Clearly, Ash and or Cassie and Bomb King weren't enough. You trust and, enough. and are unwanted. Stranger. Don't keep us another situation where you could get caught out. So you need to have some hit scan, even if it's a Furia that you're running, or even if it's a Grover because Got of the consistency you, with the throwing axes. <clears throat> you can kind of miss a few, but still be able to kind of heal as well as focus on that as a secondary support. And that's exactly what Downfall are going to grab to make sure that even if there is a Drogo's in the sky, they'll hit him with the cripple. And there's Leon just for some insurance. Yeah, this is good stuff for sure. Grover's super strong, I think, on Stone Keep. If you're able to just sort of like get control uh, of the gatehouse and you just sort of float on those steps, you're healing your tanks, you're healing any DPS on the balcony above you. Grover can really encompass a lot of space no matter what happens on this map, and that's what makes him so strong. Yeah. That can be said for a lot of maps, though. I mean, his radius is really, really something to behold at this point in time. He's in a pretty damn strong spot as far as his history. We also get to see a really unique uh, moment here where both teams are potentially calling each other's bluffs, saying, all right, now we have Grover and Leon, your Drogos is going to suck. And he says, well, I see your Grover and Leon, you have hit scan, but I feel that confident that I'm just going to beat Drogos and beat you with my play. The dredge here as well. I ain't seen none of this. Surprised, surprised, but has some good corridor control. Not Go rated ahead. super highly Keep in a lot of people's tier lists and, and initial projections, uh, but could do some work here for downfall. Yeah, I mean, it's it's... It's the new Willow, right? You know, you get him up on that balcony, man, and it's you're going to have some problems very, very quickly, especially when it appears to be that, you know, Five Stack has gone for the Inara Barrack, right? They want to win this objective fight. They want to have their front lines prioritize all their ducks in a row. And this is the character that is just going to rip all that to shreds. I mean, there's simply no character in the game that can stand against the barrage that comes out from this howitzer. And Dredge, I mean, he's the man to do it. Are we going to see a hurl? Like, I I'm sorry, but I got to figure out why you would take Dredge instead of the pip there. Shadow's already proven it. Secondary healer is pretty meta right now. Uh, Pip is great on this map with a lot of different angles. Dredge has just as hard a time hitting Drogos in the sky as Pip would. So I just wonder what the intention behind it is, and unless he just feels that confident. I think they feel good enough about Leon and, like you said, Scott over, where they can just say, all right, you, it's it's one of those domino effects, right? You do yeah. your job so I can do my job. If you're not doing your job, right. my job's not going to get done, and we're all going to have problems here. So they have gone sort of all in on the fact that Edgem is going to be able to deal with Let's this Drogos. And even if he can't, I don't know. as long as they can maintain control of like, uh, you know, this balcony, Dredge doesn't need to be hard exposed on the balcony. You can sort of do what you want to do with Scuttle from the lower ground there and just keep dumping them onto the objective point. But winning this first fight will be very critical. And the fall off is making these uh, reloads not as effective, but right as we say it, it all goes the right way for them. They just want to win this balcony fight hard. Now, we haven't seen Tuga's perspective in this fight, so we have no idea where the Drogos has been, Sheesh. what's been happening. Looks like he's just been back there, not really getting much done. And it looks like Edgem finally cleans him up, says, I got hit scan now, boy. That yeah. is not going to work on me. Ruckus is there, too. and That's when, true. When you're allowed to be on this, like, second tier, not all the way on the ground floor, your damage isn't going to be, you know, full fall off, oh, but you're going to be about halfway there. Jay in a good spot. He's done a really good job so far this set uh, about being aggressive and controlling space and stuff like that. Dredge off to a pretty strong start as well. And now things were, are going to get Whoa. scary, right? If this Drogos is allowed oh. to retake control of the balcony, and he does. And now here's the problem. What do you do with this? I mean, Edgem's down, and now you have the Ruckus, which is, I guess, a great secondary opportunity to deal with this. I guess I should say tertiary opportunity since the Grover's dead as well. But, man, Tuga just comes in at the right moment. Five stack. They win this point. Ultimately, five stacking was the downfall there, I think, <laughs> for a downfall. They they got punished hard for Too that. Puns, man. He came out of nowhere. I'm not even, I, it's almost unavoidable. It's in, unavoidable. In a set like this. Yeah. He really had a great situation there. Didn't quite get dismounted there. Came up over the top there. Apparently didn't get called out either because he just came through like a wrecking ball and dismantled five stack, uh, or excuse me, downfall there up on the balcony. Yeah, and you can see there's damage right there. 1,200 onto that Drogos is going to be about half health or more, actually, because he lost some health. And 
not a lot of Drogos players running those health cards because there's just so many other valuable cards in the Drogos Oda. In fact, let's take a look at what Toga is running. He is running Apex Predator, but only at level two, so that'll put him at 2,300. And so uh, still about 55, 60% of the health, a full health imminence will take. Tries to find Ooh. it. He will get the Hexafire, trade for trade. See what happens. Tip for tap. Here comes the assert dominance out on the high ground as well. But unfortunately, they has to rotate down. I keep thinking that's Thiel as well. That's another thing. I, mean, I he, think he did that intentionally. He plays all like. the same champions as well. <laughs> it's really making it difficult for me. 117 on the clock. Risky rotation down out of his ultimate, but it ends up paying off as that defense will hold for now. And still struggling to really understand the purpose of the, drog of the dredge pick uh, as far as the greater goal of the composition and who they're fighting. I, I see it as far as the Stonekeep balcony, but that feels like a very isolated reason to be selecting Dredge here. But clearly can dominate when given a little bit of a leash. There's always high ground to stand on, I think, and that's pretty important for Dredge. If he's not on the balcony, if he's on the back foot here on this defense, you know what I mean? Like he can just stay up here and do his thing. Yeah. That's an important thing for Dredge because he, he is like the hard and fast. Like if you are not above people, you are going to have a bad time. Yeah, and the thing, if he if people get above you or like get into your back line, you're in trouble. And maybe he's just thinking, you know, this is a very back line composition that I'm facing. Inara and Barrick, they're not gonna rush me. Drogos, I'll see him coming and I can back off, take my portal. And Cassie, you know. I could probably deal with it, Cassie. Like, I, she won't be, like, flanking me like an Andrew would. So he might just be feeling really safe about who he's going up against, but this is the situation that I feel like he's not going to succeed in. Good stuff there from Drogos. Playing the angles well. Tuga. Really smart. Almost has his little combo ready. Has his, oh my goodness, another Dragon Punch ready. Yeah. He just used it last fight. So that just goes to show you how much damage he's really getting on the board. I don't know if I like opening with it. But I like that he gets a kill. He just trades himself. I feel like you just you have your salvo. Like try to just get some pressure there. If the dragon punch opens up as you can kill a second, then I think that's where it becomes worthwhile. Yikes. But uh yeah, clearly it doesn't pan out the way they were hoping. Use the dragon punch indeed. And Edgem gets a trip to hold the defense. Obviously they're charging it up very quickly, but not having that available and the fact that downfall didn't have to use anything for it. What a great fire spit to open up that Seriously. fight. Tuga. He's going to have to rely on his base kit now because he just popped that ultimate. He's at the fresh 5%. Nowhere near having that fully charged as well. A couple of ultimates are down for 5 stack. Something they're going to have to play around for sure. Downfall are almost entirely charged across the board. So they will certainly have the advantage going into this round. And maybe we can see a little bit of play because you have the very, very confirmable stun from a certain dominance into a Kraken. Mm. Because no one's really been able to true. consistently land those yet, and it's a very untapped part of Dredge's kit. That is very true. You are not wrong about that. I like the idea. <clears throat> they might have been practicing. Somebody's got to well. find a way to do it. Yeah, and I think they might just be waiting here for the Drogos. Good damage. Edgem is alive, and here's a problem. Get away from the POV. That's very. Whoa. I don't think there. that's Edgem, what he meant to do. Edgem finds Toga. I think, I think he's trying to maybe catch Wake Up Amadeus. Felt that maybe the barrack was already dead. <laughs> I think he literally just mistimed when exactly that animation casts the ability. You know what I mean? Like he was looking at the point, like it was this yeah. is a good spot for it. It's exactly the uh, size of this dome shield here. <laughs> and then he just pulls off for no reason. Like, what are you, you gonna catch that Cassie three seconds unaware? The X Files, the Paladin's Files. Do, 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 trying to discover do, do, do. the mysteries of the Dredge Ultimates. And again, Tuga comes back with a second life and finds some value. And this is what they've done. They forced Edgem over into the side. They're not punishing him. Edgem is down and exposed, and they've cleared off this point. So at the end of the day, they have to do something when they push him back. Shadow is in trouble, takes the portal, will travel back to Legroso, finding himself in some danger as well, as that's the name that he's given himself. So he knows how to handle that well. Look at that. Wake up, Amadeus says good night, thanks to Jay. And there's a, another, another Kraken. Kraken. Wow. So Shadow has been proving everybody wrong about this, and Edgem starting to get locked. Did he it. shut down a streak or something? I don't I know. I mean, that was quick. Dredge, yeah. Dredge Ultimate is not like a fast charging ultimate in my book. He could have uh, some morale boost that he's running. I haven't taken a look, but no, just doing that much damage, Nick. Yes, so much damage. He's freaking owning. And yeah. now we're getting to an interesting spot. Two cauterized threes are ready to be purchased from Ash and Leon. Shadow's working his way through that Deft Hands one, and now he's on his second offensive items because that is the name of this season. Multiple items of each category, not the place you want to stand in a small and closed box. 
Woo. It's like fighting Mike Tyson in a phone booth. You're just going <laughs> to have a bad time. Well, you know, the only advantage there is that maybe he wouldn't be able to get his arms up to swing. You might just be so <laughs> enclosed, you just, he'd have to headbutt you. Not that that would be any better. And also not something Mike Tyson would be afraid to do. I might be better. Yeah, I mean, talk about getting your ears bit off. I think that situation, I, I know Evander Holyfield's not stepping into that box with him, that's for sure. Yep. He's always got a hood on now. <laughs> Big UGA fan. His son's running back for UGA now, and he's almost always got his hood up wow. when he's at the games watching. Wow. Hey, yeah, I hear it. And apparently that's always like, it's like a you want to see it type of situation. Oh, like, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, here's my ear. I feel like there's going to be Still some, gone. Uh, didn't grow back didn't yet. Didn't grow back. I feel like there's a, a thing he could do for it. I don't know. I mean, now that this day and age, you can, you know, everything can be fake. They can grow ears on the back of mice. Uh, come on. <laughs> Genetically modified, uh, you know, watermelon Super with no human seeds. earring. You could, you could uh, get some uh, cartilage on your ear. I don't know. Like, give me a break. Don't tell me human advancement in technology is it's tough, dude. <laughs> has you know? peaked and we it's can't tough. get ear cartilage. You probably look sick with it, though. You know, it's one of those sexy scars. You know, you might be able to put in some fake ear cartilage and just like, like do it like a tattoo, like a statement. You know, just have it be like, like all uh, just you know pristine white. <laughs> porcelain, like porcelain ear. ear. <laughs> just like a, you know, a diamond. Oh, you know, like man. fake teeth. Well, nothing fake about this damage here and the 20 seconds left on the clock. Downfall. I've got to find a way to get this one through. Or five sack are going to get the easy 3-1 lead here. They have all the ultimates in the world. I still would like to see some, some comboing here to get the free kills with a dredge ultimate. And admittedly, really strong uh, play from Shadow on the dredge. Been yeah, it's been good. Very strong. Has his shortcut set up. I mean, he's got yep. he's got everything, all his ducks in a row. And uh, he is only getting better with that deft hands. And, you know, one of the in inherent kind of buffs that happened towards Dredge was the item uh, deft hands becoming a little bit easier. A lot easier, in fact. 150 credits less per level. Yeah. Um, so that's a big deal. It's definitely big. Definitely big. A lot of damage coming out. I don't know if that was wise. I mean, she she stands in the full fury of that broadside there. Dread Serpent misses as well. If there was ever a time to get this payload through, it is definitely now. Overtime taking away, and Wake Up Amade is trying to hold strong here, Nick. But I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. Five Great stack. Great movement, T-Mac. They are falling and falling. Pelagroso oh, with the bowling ball reset is enough. And T-Mac just a little late. Didn't see the go cue yet. And so uh, he just said, all right. I'll try and see. And unfortunately, he saw a little too late. No Big overtime. cooldown spent, though, from five stack. They get the dome shield out, one of the slower charging, charging ultimates in the game. Dread Serpent was used, Seismic Crash was used. It's going to be evened up here to a piece. Edgem at 12 and 4. He's having himself a great game. And Shadow hot on his heels at 75k. Like we've mentioned, very, very good dredge play. One of the few that I've actually seen this season as well. Yeah. Not been a heavily, heavily picked up character. He went through a weird thing where he had that like crazy knockback Three, stuff that I two, admittedly had, I did one. not play with at all when it was in the game. It was something that is a very high level movement sort of knockback, high execution maneuver that could have been insane if it ever made it to competitive play, but it didn't. Right. But I feel like when something like that's in the game, it's a lot of people playing dredge, period, yep. and maybe just learning this character better and how to be more effective with it. Yep. Absolutely. And I think that just maybe opens the doors here. And you, can, you can't say broadside doesn't do damage. But right here is maybe where the issues are. His shortcut's also healing him, so he is running the shortcut heal card, which is a very important thing to know. It does give you quite a bit of healing. Um, 100 every second. You can pull that up to 250 if you really want to. And, uh, of course, uh, Broadside knocking him up, giving him a little bit of maneuverability when things do get bad. I want to see him, like, use that, though. That's the card that, like, I haven't seen was it. a part of that cheese. And it's either he just hasn't edited his loadout since he got nerfed or changed. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't He's know. Like, here, bro? I haven't really seen it. Come to fruition here, 93% for a downfall. And as long as Shadow is here just teeing off, things are not going to get any easier for Inara. And another thing to, to remember, as we are in 99%, looks like Downfall are looking very, very good to, 
go ahead and capture this objective, maybe start to take the lead in this game. Sometimes these builds, although we're talking about a player, come from a captain, they come from a, a team-wide decision. Um, although Shadow's the one playing it, he may not have been the one to make the call for Dredge. He certainly could have. A lot of times it is the case, but it's not always the case. So be aware if you ever feel like something's off or interesting or weird. I've had a lot of conversations with players and say, yeah, I, I didn't even pick that. I mean, you know, my captain said pick it, or, or my team was like, yo, you got to play this. And, uh... It goes even to the depth of what loadouts are they running? You know, the team oftentimes will say, put one point in this or put one point in that, and it takes a guy like Cuss Cutie to say, no, I'm doing this, with a very big ego and a lot of confidence to go against it. Well, another uh, Kraken will come out here. That won't be the source of the kill, but a kill nonetheless here for Shadow. Dredge, a guy that could eventually be one of the characters that plows right through Inara's wall. And just not the tankiness that you're used to seeing from the Stone Warden, not because of her, but it's because of Dredge. The amount of damage he can do to a stationary target is obscene. 127 on the clock and a great Grover ultimate to keep everyone's health bars full. This looks like it could be the end of the game. Definitely does, but Jay's really low. So let's consider this. Tuga finds one, Ice Monkey finds another one, and now it's just the Ash. Uh, and Edge of finding Tuga, that is a big deal. But you know, this Inara, she's not going anywhere, I'll tell you that. Edge coming down, but now it's Peligroso who's able oh. to contest. Wow. And it's into the dome so shield. Close. Ash looking for the stun. She's going to get it, but uh, she gets knocked out. Wake up Amadeus with a beautiful disengage wow. into the big game. And that's enough burst damage to continually push them back enough and completely hold here by them from time. They committed for that. They wanted it. I mean, they were mere inches away, hair lengths from crossing the finish line. 40 seconds on the clock now. The payload will start to roll backwards. If Anyone from the offensive team fails to contest as you're starting to see that reflected now a better angle. in the progress bar. Tuga playing up over these roofs here, not letting Shadow get to his spot, which is important, but unfortunately he's been poked out now. Nice angle. Ooh, why go Leon. back up? I don't know, he's not healed. That was a rough one. Tuga goes down here. It looks like uh, they've finally taken their time. Ice Monkey could be falling. Really nice harpoon there. Has the slow on it as well. And that's going to do a downfall. They find the victory in game number two. A lot of things that when people, you know, stop playing um, that uh, that that hurl dredge, you know, the benefit of the slow on the harpoon, even though you only have it isolated, 50% right. slow is a big deal, and especially on a character that does have no burst mobility like an arm. Both the uh, both the dredge loadouts are so just like. I am so focused on doing one thing. It's easy to forget about your shortcut. It's easy to forget about your harpoon. When you're playing Hurl, it's easy to forget that you even have a weapon in your hand and you can reload and do that sort of thing. It's easy to shut down, but Shadow does a really good job using all of the parts of Dredge's kit to, to stay effective throughout that game. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't think it would perform, but it did. So Shadow, good job there, as well as the rest of Downfall. One more game, potentially. And that is a huge slow. You're right. It's it's It makes it... Almost bearable to fight someone on even footing or, God forbid, above you if they're slowed by 75%. Yeah. I run some extra slow. You run the extra slow. Because I'm a bot, and I'm like, I want you Blow to the man down. pretty much hard-rooted when I hit you with this thing. Hey, man, sometimes you just got to go for it, just making the enemy feel as bad as possible. You might tilt them. You might actually just make it easier for yourself. That's more likely. But the tilt factor, it's... it's it's important. It's certainly there. And Dredge, we know he brings moves. a lot of that. He brings a lot of that. Just you can't feel like you can't play. Your whole screen's just cluttered. It's just like a minefield. Like, what, yeah. what am I supposed to do here? It's just, yeah. Dredge just yells at you the whole time. Like, he's always <laughs> just filling up your uh, your audio Hell, mix. Arr, ahoy! Yeah. It's like, what the, where's this guy? Shut he's up. coming from the sky. Shut up. Ah. <laughs> I don't know where I'm you are. Slowed. <laughs> a vast you make. With this pirate, you know. Pirates can get annoying. They, they certainly can. I'll tell you that. Uh, we do have one more game, I believe, right? One more. Yep. Oh, we're gonna so take we're going to take a quick break, guys. So we'll be right back. We're going to take a few minutes, rest, recover. We'll get back to the set right after this. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back, Charlie. <laughs> How's it going over there at the old... Uh... Oh, my pants are not high enough. <laughs> well, I'm not enough. talking fast enough. Oh, doing a Charleston over here. <laughs> Good games, good games. Well, back to, uh, um, <clears throat> sorry about that. I love right. that era of music, by the way. <laughs> you I don't know, know why. This makes like me so 50s? happy. Yeah. <laughs> you imagine like a Mickey Mouse, you know, just like walking around doing stuff like this. This <laughs> is what they thought was cool. You know, it's funny about humans. They, they think that certain moves in time, you look back, it's like, how was that cool? But, you know, the twist, this was like really cool. Revolutionary. Revolutionary. This is like <laughs> super cool. Everyone's looking at each other like, yeah, dude, that, you also, see that guy's risque, twist? dude. Th what? His hips. <laughs> his hip. Look at his. <laughs> look at his behind. Television? Right. 
<laughs> this country's going to hell in a handbasket. Elvis, Elvis doing you. this, and it's just like the, uh-huh. the most risque thing ever. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how we just, we trans, and now we're in, you know, what we do this nowadays. Like, I don't know, kids. <sighs> You could just laugh now at humans. Now they're flossing. You can just at laugh least at humans. Dentists can rest easy. Because every kid knows how to floss now. That's worthy of a map screen right there. That's Dentist. worthy of a map screen. And cut. And we're Guys, done. we're here every Monday. We don't get paid for this, you know? <laughs> we just do it. They told me I was getting paid. Huh? <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> you're, you're getting paid? <laughs> I got to rethink some life choices. Hold on, man. Been here three years. I got. I haven't got paid once. You're kidding? Yikes! Oh my god! Yeah, <clears throat> I'll be right back. Zoinks, guys! Here Zoinks. it is. Zoinks! It's time for bans. Downfall. Cooper this one away here. Uh, they're gonna ban out the Torvald and the Makoa. I want to see Makoa get picked. See if he's still. Uh, if he's still daddy or not. Yeah, I. Uh, I. I've been hearing some things to the grapevine that Makoa is not as. Uh, not as threatening, as he used to be, but um, still. Threatening Not enough. Threatening enough, you know that uh, that that dislocate that relocation truly uh, displacement is extremely contest. powerful. Han's still in a in a great spot with the storm of bullets, and uh, I think uh, even vortex grip if you run the right composition around it. Barrick and Leon taken here for five stack who are fighting now on their last breath. They have to win this game. I will fight to protect the sanctity so far, of the Leon's wild. Leon's been the key for a lot of these teams, and five stack prioritize it just a little bit earlier. Downfall do get their con and an R. I like this though. I like having the Someday solution and the answer R. here. No overpowers to throw R and R off because we're gonna put them together on the same team. And I want to see more uh, more cons landing this consistently. I saw it missed once, Sight. and Lose then I saw it. I guess Life. get resilienced out. I guess he, he tried to what? throw this Grover off the map, <clears throat> but his, ah, his, his throw was so weak. His sauce was just so weak that yeah. he couldn't get this tree off the map. Not enough sauce, dude. Granted, throwing trees is not easy. Yeah, it's I mean, like a Scottish sports, you know, where they, they they throw that like tree trunk thing, <laughs> or like the telephone pole toss. Yep, I would Scottish be down. People, I'd be down for a grappler champion that could basically grab like as a front line. He grabs you and he does like like a you know a Zangief like a discus throw <laughs> and just like throws you back. A Zangief. But it was purposeful. It was like everything he did was like a move. His Q and F were like grapple moves. Like one was a throw, one was like a knockdown, bounces you up, and he can like get a shot off at you. Oh man. I think that'd be pretty cool. Talos was kind of like that in an early development phase. He had like it was a very like Imagine Talos grapple style of yeah, like he would punch you up into the air and then he could punch Here's you back. The you're right. You're right. But it was deemed too tough. Too tough for the plebs. For you. <laughs> you plebs? I'm really pointing at myself in the screen. So Nice save. Unfortunately, you guys no got you baited. Here. You got you baited. Pointing at me. That would have been too hard for me. I need simple characters. And speaking of simple characters, but you heal, you shoot a shotgun, you shoot a net, you jump. Every cooldown's 10 seconds. Couldn't be cleaner. Couldn't be meaner. And Evie here talking about not easy. She's going to bring a little bit of uh, edge to this matchup for downfall. Shadows Evie, the first PPL player that Big Jamer ever had to play against on that account. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. <clears> He's <throat> playing Victor, too. It always happens when you're playing. You pick the a character char that's going to get dope. You pick a character that you'd never really play, even. <laughs> you're just like, all right, <laughs> sick. Give it up. Give it up. I, it's always like. For me, it's always like, uh, I don't know, I always run into Invocal. He's always carrying, and I always like am picking something that I don't want to pick and I'm salty about already because my team has picked like four damage to start the map. So I'm like, <laughs> God, I cannot pick Zoinks. I can't pick Drogo, so I'll pick Khan, and one guy switches to like Pip, you know? And you're like, oh, God. One of those days. And then, and then you see like a guillotine Zen, and you're like, oh, my God. Terrific. Can't wait to eat that. Can't wait to times. eat that 10 times in a row. Shadow here. Sniffs this one out. Tries to hit a midair. Good blink. Ow. Blinks away. Good damage. Is that ensnare? Uh, that's a that's a net shot bucket, looks to be. That I, hurt. Maybe I, that's just Eevee being squishy, but. Well, no, that's Boko. Okay, so then uh, yeah, that's just a headshot. It's just Eevee being squishy. <laughs> yeah. Headshots on Buck, man. They are meaty. 1,500 damage as well, only to work at 648. So he's going to hit about 950 for that headshot in general. Could get up to 1,000 if he hits all of the shotgun on you. But he's just going to back off here. Doesn't have much. He should be dead, and there Shadow finds is. the first blood. 
And now we can move to the point. You'll notice it's 12% to 6% at almost two minutes on the clock, where other maps would already be seeing a, a capture for one team or another. But you, you see this point, it's so far away from safety in any direction Oof. that you don't really feel safe getting out there until you do get one of those kills to come through. Downfall will get the first blood, and Downfall will get 50% to their name. And, you know, uh, Tuga's hunting right now. And the thing is that it seems like Kness has been wow. pushed out. Misses the big game the disengage, range. unfortunately. But T-Mac cleans up, wake up Amadeus, and that is a huge amount of damage that is now off the battlefield for five-stack esports. That was a very, very fast overpower. That's not a fast-charging ultimate. You know, when you do this much damage on Storm of Bullets Khan, it's relatively easy. Hit me with them damage charts, young Anthony. Where are we at? 12,000. Okay. He's hanging in there. Yeah, hanging in there for sure. Beating Eevee out. Well and uh, beating Barrack, who is consistently one of the top damage tanks just because of his turrets. Uh, and also has a really nice selective shot. Downfall. A huge gun. A huge gun. For the lad. That was oof. Missed that one. <clears throat> These tanks aren't uh, It's tough for the traditional tank fight to happen, right? Because they're not, you know, four heading into each other on the objective. So Khan, as the only hitscan nice. tank in the game, is the only one that's going to be able to continue to do consistent damage. Nice ice block there. Going to out some of the damage. Drop the ice storm onto his head. One more shot will do the trick. Edgem will put the nail in the coffin. Very smart plays. I like Whoa. it. Whoa. Okay. Hello. I was going to say something else, but got to comment on just the aim right there. Beautiful stuff from Shadow. Showing why he's to be feared on this Eevee. Really flexing a lot in this Paladins minor league qualifiers, and uh, it's almost putting them huh. That was actually sick. So, good convergence there, but unfortunately, Nara just backed down the hill. Shadow ice blocked, and then Khan overpowered for CC immunity, so nobody ended up getting pulled there. And they find the healer. This should be it, unless Buck gets a huge kill here. Nice heal, and Shadow just contributing way too much damage. And now, if he can find Toga, looking for the blink, but look at that. Wake Up Amadeus has him in his sights, just trying to get the Leon off the battlefield, force her back, and now he can start applying pressure if he wants to. It is just... Too little, too late, it seems like, for the Leon. Big heal comes through for Ceres. And this is this is double scary because five sec just lost last game. Yeah. This guy's loser's pick. This is their this is where they wanted to go. Right. And it looks like they're lost. Maybe didn't have a plan really ready. Only one kill amongst all five members of five stack esports. Just really uh, not putting things together here as far as execution. It's not the most conventional comp. Uh, coming out. I mean, no, the K buck. Kinesa's not, you know, super, super common here. Eevee's not super, super common here. So maybe that is something that's throwing five stack off balance a little bit. They're running the three DPS composition here with the barrack. I mean, nothing is super e easy for five stack, I think, to come by here. They need to get these early flanks out. Buck obviously spotted out, and maybe he was just too alone. Yeah. That first round, he was the only thing to shoot at. Right. So that's why that flank didn't work out, but. They've got to get something going here and fast. And, and I think, you know, you got to make sure a couple things happen. Knessa repositions early. And then you also have to make sure that you get Eevee's Ice Block. And then if you do that, you can you can apply a lot of pressure. Uh, but they're doing a great job of protecting. This is a lot of pressure this time. Yeah, and so they're, they're doing a different thing. Barrack actually not posting up on the objective yet. Downfall take 30% as a result of it. They've rotated around this map, and Khan is playing to his strengths near the water where he could be able to throw someone off very quickly. That's true. This is a very a very weird but not unheard of way that this point fight goes where it's just ring around the rosy and all the teams just rotate as one unit around each other. Shadow finds the first kill, though, and this first kill has been so, so important for Fish Market thus far. 2-0, they lead. Downfall in control yet again in round two. And a lot of this is credit, and he's just getting some scouting report there. Relocating wants a better blink location to initiate the fight, and he's going to find it here. He's forcing Wake Up Amadeus out. That's a really good overpower. They guarantee one any. kill. Now he's got the uh, Ice Storm, so he's going to go in. He finds Buck, gets the double, looking for the triple. But that one's going to go to the Con, looking to get his third here, though. And that will be it. Shadow and the rest of Downfall just light it up well here on done. Fish Market. I mean, they, they combo everything perfectly. The overpower connects. That gets a kill. Blinks in. Ice Storm onto two. Follows it up with the size of the crash. Just utter lockdown. No one on five stack can move here. Downfall is not hesitating. I believe that Enlightenment was charged when the round started and just never got used. There was three ultimates down going into this round for five stacks, so they're just not managing their resources as well as Downfall and not getting the value from what they do have as well as Downfall has. Now let's take a look at 
if they can defend. I don't see it happening. Nick, unless something major changes. Five no. stack esports just haven't had any momentum here. They just not really look themselves. I think that one game that they did take clearly was a drafting error on the side of downfall. And ever since then, they've really been able to position themselves well as far as champions and presence on these maps. Yeah, fish market can be a little weird. 3 DPS is not something that's been overly successful since the days of, you know, Fnatic when they were running that right. to great success. And no one's really been able to pull it off the same way since. Major changes in the terms of just, like, a kill yeah. coming through here. So a little bit of a stabilization for five stack. Maybe they can turn this one around. Ooh, steady aim. Got to deal with Kinesa, though. Big damage coming through. One of the more consistent ways to do damage now with Kinesa is steady aim. The buff lasts a long time. I believe it's seven Damn seconds it. after hitting a fully charged shot, which is one of the longer buff durations in the game. Doesn't mean victory, victory rush. Victory rush at eight. Yeah, <laughs> that's a beast of a buff. Yeah, it's a it's a long one. <clears throat> Maybe uh, Fury's buff, her ultimate, which lasts for eight seconds. Maybe the only other tying that thing. I don't know if there's anything that lasts for longer than eight seconds. There probably is one thing that I'm just forgetting about, but I'm not sure. Don't know, don't care. Not relevant here. Downfall, another good start here for them. Just trying to break this hill, and they get the payload pushed all the way down the hill. But it's really spread out, kind of a weird fight right now. Cassie is rolling around this con. If he can just stay alive, and he does. Yeah. They'll pick up this kill on the Cassie. Ooh. Or they'll forget about her and let her get back to full HP. Wow, and this is gonna put Edgem under pressure. Ice Monkey finds the kill, which is Seven, nice. Six, but at the end of the day, uh, too many people leaving the job up to someone else because they thought it was already get done. If you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. Downfall there, they slip up right at the finish line here, and they're gonna allow a defense to come through in the 3-1 score line. Yeah. That's got some range on it now. Wow. Seriously. I don't really remember how far it was when it was an auto hit, but it did not feel like that far. He's been on point. He hasn't missed a single one of those, and he's been hitting pretty much what I can only imagine is near max distance on it as well. Yeah. Well, they get the defense. This is uh, unusual for five sack esports on this map. The first one of the day here on Fish Market, but the one that mattered, the one that kept them in this game. Now with comeback mechanic yet again, Having fought this map twice and now going for their third objective capture, let's see what yeah. they do to maybe put some pressure on, maybe siphon off that rotation, maybe pincer them, send two rights and two left. They're still in a pretty good spot here if you're downfall because comeback mechanic only helps you if you can stand on the objective. And they've they've shown a you know a bit of a propensity just to be scared uh -oh. of the objective until you get a kill. And they're using this 3 DPS composition to try and do that. Right now, they're just chasing an Eevee around the map. They are, and now look who gets caught out. I mean, Eevee's mobility is really the difference maker there. They're chasing her, but they can't do much, and the Ice Block is back up by the time they want to finish her off. Shadow's been really maneuvering perfectly here, and that's a nice shield from Pelagroso. I mean, buys him a couple of extra seconds. Uh, can wake up Amadeus and Unholy Strike do anything off of this? She's getting the Bach heal, so now it's really up to this Leon to hard carry this game. Otherwise, it is looking over, and it does seem to be the downfall of Five Stack Esports. By downfall. Still has the ultimate there, knows that all the cooldowns are down for Eevee. Man. But it's an easy sidestep for Shadow, and it's an easy 75% in climbing for downfall on the objective. This may just be it. Buck probably going to get in there to touch. No, he gets blown up mid flight, and he won't make it. Neither will Barrack. Absolutely unfortunate to be able to have that situation take place and not get. Uh, really what you wanted from your own map selection and tying up the set, but great stuff from Downfall. They close it out. They're going to be moving on to the finals here in North America. And let's take a look at the post-game stats. Those are going to be coming up on your screen, and you'll see how each of those members on the winning team performed. Edgem leading the damage charts yet again. T-Mac, though, some impressive healing numbers for that Fish Market game. Wow. Not... Not as much damage as it felt like Shadow had in terms of impact but on that game. Damage. It felt like he was always getting the kills. And he will be your set MVP. Congratulations to the boy himself, one of our ex-PPL players who is now competing and doing very well for himself here in the minor league. Seems like he's having a lot of fun, you know, a lot of Twitter banner with the, a lot of these NA minor league rosters. It's a yep. very exciting minor league scene. Always kind of has been. He played a lot of stuff today. Looks good on pretty much all of it. 
And I think he's got a bright future here in the minor league. Yeah, diversity is one of the benefits of the minor league because, let's be honest, you don't have to be your SS tier self on your best SS tier champion in order to win games. Like, it might be in the PPO, where one pick, one missed flick shot could be the difference between winning and losing a championship. The PML, you have a little bit more wiggle room, and you could flex onto your champions, show your diversity, and that also gives you a better calling card when you do want to go to the PPL in the future. Yep. It's been a great look for him. He's already got the experience, so now, you know, he, he kind of like came into the scene and quickly got onto that team in the PPL, so now the minor league might be a good spot for him to hone down those skills. Absolutely. Figure out his real identity as a player and meshing with teams, meeting new people. It's all good stuff here. It's been a lot of fun to watch, and it will be a lot of fun to continue to watch here as the minor league develops into its own spectacle. Well, we have one more set to close out the day. This team is looking pretty good, though. It's going to be tough to beat them up, but the North American finals are right after this. Gormizer and Nick are going to take you through the action. Right now, we're going to go on a quick break, but we'll be right back to close out the day with the NA finals in just a minute.